talked. We actually have a special project I can't talk about to go somewhere that your podcast has talked about. I'll just say that a uh, ancient site underwater. An ancient site underwater yeah. that I've talked about. Yeah. Uh, so with, I'll, I'll, with man-made I'll, stuff I'll underwater. Gonna, we're, we're gonna we're gonna go map it and put an ROV on it. Okay. And try to date it and and confirm its existence. And I just I'll leave you at that. There was a story that came out I heard recently. Who told me this? That there's I don't know if this was like special information I shouldn't talk about publicly. But I heard that oh no there was an article there was an article in the Jerusalem Post actually about uh, they're they're making some sort of a movie about a discovery off the coast of Spain they think it could be Atlantis I saw that was it Spain I think it was off the coast of Spain yeah I read about that and I don't think it's right why not well uh, and and this is if you do if you read that's yeah, it. This yeah. Is it yeah if you read Cadiz uh, Plato's dialogues. Uh, where all that information, he, he puts out a, a lot of information on the very specific yeah. location of it. And so I, I don't think it was that close to Spain. No, no. According to what Plato wrote, um, it was most likely, um, oh, what is that chain of islands called? What's the chain of islands called that's off the coast? Of, it's it's kind of off the coast of, of Spain. It's like in the Atlantic, uh, Azores, the Azores. Um, my buddy Randall Carlson, yeah. who talks a lot about this stuff, he's he's been trying to put together an expedition to go out to the Azores for a while. Um, but it's a fascinating looking place. That would be a fun place to scuba dive. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, yeah. The the problem with the Atlantis stuff is that are you familiar with the chain of transmission? No. With Atlantis? No. It's insane. Steve, I don't know if you ever saved this photo, but we we famously we've gone over this many times. There, the train of transmission with Plato is it starts with, uh, it basically from the time Plato wrote about it, he was told about it oh. from somebody like a hundred years before that. I think it was Pliny the Younger. That's right. And then Pliny the Elder was like a hundred years before that, and then. Apparently, the gap between uh, Solon and the person Solon got it from was like a thousand years or something like mm. this. So there's like it's like a thousand years of verbal, basically transmission, never written down once until Plato, and then you know an oral history going back fifteen hundred years is crazy. Oh, there we go, beautiful. So, okay, number one, the destruction of Atlantis 9,000 years before Solon. Um, so the oral history of a, of a thousand years, written down by the Egyptians eight, this is confusing, 8,000 years before Solon, it was written down. So there's a thousand year gap between when, when Atlantis was uh, allegedly destroyed from the Critias and when uh, it was first written about. So, um, no actual writing of this from Egypt. Uh, the priest, the priest reads records years pass, then tells it by memory to Solon without consulting any written records. Uh, Solon tell, uh, tells his relative uh, Dropides. Dropides tells it to his son, Critias the Elder. At age 90, he tells his Critias the Younger. And then the Younger tells Socrates 50 years later, and then Plato writes it down. So this is like so it's basically uh uh like eight like seven thousand years of just oral transmission of the stories before he writes about it. Mm. Um, you know, which is like maybe. But uh it's really it's really fascinating. And and Plato was known for he was not a historical writer, he was a, a philosophical yeah. writer, and he wrote about hypothetical war games. And you know things like the the allegory of the cave, and mm -hmm. yeah. uh, he was he was he was writing about you know hypothetical thought experiments, things like this, you know. So, well, yes, and not uh, to discredit, not to say that there there absolutely could be some you know remnants of a lost underwater city or civilization, to, just the way like 
the way that the climate has changed over millennia, but you know, since before the younger dries, the Pleistocene and like the lowering of the sea level, it's very, very likely that there could be ancient cities that are under the oceans. A hundred percent. And actually, have you ever heard of the Silurian hypothesis? I think so. Steve, check it out. S I L U R I A N. I believe it's this idea that the earth is so old that there would have been enough time for an advanced civilization to have existed millions of years ago and that there'd be no sign of it in the geological record because of a of, of millennia of, of all the geologic and volcanic and cataclysmic processes that occur here. So if you just do the math, like, like Avi's done, there could be intelligent technology civilizations that have already formed here and mm -hmm. become extinct. Right, totally. And uh, why not? Uh, so I, I, I don't, I think ultimately I want to see some data on Atlantis and, and uh, I have a few leads, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. but, I'll, uh, but then there's even the idea of going farther back. And I, I, you, maybe you've had some folks on your shows that have found, for example, metals and objects that were in parts of the geologic strata that they never should have been. Mm -hmm. You know, about, I, f I forgot the exact examples of that, but there there are a few out there. Very odd. Yeah, uh, this says the core idea is the hyp hypothesis questions if a civilization capable of industrial activity could have risen and fallen on Earth before humans, and if so, how we might find evidence of it. That's the problem is there's no toasters in the desert. <laughs> we can't find any ancient toasters, well, but we do have the megalithic blocks. We do have the great pyramids. So I, I mean, this is our discussion before. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, you look at, you go, if you've been to the Louvre or, or have you been to Egypt? I've never been there. Have yet. you been to the Louvre? I have been to the Louvre. So you've seen the, the Egyptian uh, carvings, stone carvings, and it's just as you said earlier, they didn't have the tools to do that. Right. Did did Giorgiani on your show talk about his hypothesis, for example, of ancient stone structures and and, and Atlantis specifically? Uh, he's got a lot of crazy hypotheses, but uh, hypotheses. I don't know how you say that. That's, that's right. One of his is that the pyramids are like time travelers going back and like creating this stuff to like try to communicate with us. I, I get lost in some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's interesting, but I I did. <laughs> I did like his Atlantis, uh, I guess, explanation. And then he, he in this show... Uh, yeah, remind me what it was. He, he thought that the Atlanteans had uh, developed a form of collective consciousness. That, uh, and and you all, when you start looking at psi phenomena, uh, this, and you extend it to uh, a civilization, uh, his, his thought was that large stone structures could be carved and transported with a collective conscious mental like psi psychokinesis um uh, en masse effect and when you and i'm just starting to look at this whole thing uh because it's it's coming out now as we talk about nhi and uap and like levitation yeah, yeah okay 100 and and the, and the actual carving of the stones i mean you've you've you've, you've had on guests who who have said that they did not have the, the Egyptians and, and others before did not that what's this Gobekli te Tepe? Yeah, yeah. That, they didn't. Have, what, what did they have to do that? They did mm -hmm. not have the metals to do right. that. This is the most fascinating stuff to me. Have you seen these? No. These are. This is a three D print, obviously, of a real granite vase that was found underneath the Step Pyramid. Granite. Granite. One of the hardest stones known to man. And there's multiple. There's one over there. That's another three D print. I have a friend of mine who bought a bunch of these on the antiquities market and they were confirmed created uh 4000 years ago between 4 and 5000 years ago when uh conventional egyptologists say the egyptians were carving stuff using flint chisels and pounding stones yeah, that's right. all they had that's right and now you have granite the hardest stone on the earth they took these vases that were made of that are made of granite and they measured them in a light scanner at uh, a huge aerospace company might have been Rolls Royce. Yeah, what was the precision in terms of the? It was the it, they were symmetry, the perfectly symmetrical, and the deviation, yeah. uh, the the biggest deviation was like less than the width of a human hair. Yeah, yeah. And um, that, that looks machined. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. Especially when you consider the fact that these handles are built into it. Wow. Yeah. The handles are part of the of the whole yeah. entire piece of granite. 
right? And you look inside the actual vases and you can see little tiny lined machine marks in, etched in the granite. Like it was like it was a built on a CNC machine. Oh, wow. But they know like we like people have at like there's been people that are studying this right now who I'm currently talking to that are, are talking to all the biggest gran granite manufacturers, people in China who are contracted to use CNC machines to print stuff on computers. And they say there's no way they could do re recreate something like this with granite with granite. Wow. So how did they do That's that right. 5,000 years ago? That's right. If it was 5,000 years ago, it might be way older. We don't, I don't think there's any way to carbon date it, mm. but you know, yeah, there's so many questions, it, man. It just was, doesn't line up. I mean, the, the, just the idea that this we're on this linear timeline and that, you know, we started as cavemen and, you know, a hundred thousand years ago and we just, it was a linear progression ever since then is, uh, is, is, I think that's been a bit, bit debunked big time, especially there's just so much evidence contrary to that.